color grading plays a pivotal role in your final work just as knowing how to capture it in the first place. While you film your breathtaking shots, if your grade doesn't reflect the mood or look you wanted, that could be the missing element in trying to achieve what you see on the big screen. And now, it has become more accessible than ever to attain that look with the release of the iPhone 15 as Apple has introduced Apple Log into their newest Pro iPhones. The image quality we get from cinema cameras can now be achieved with something we carry every day in our pockets, bringing a whole new meaning to mobile videography and filmmaking. Today, I will share with you how I capture, color correct, and grade my Apple Log footage to match what I get on a cinema camera. My workflow is versatile as it works with Apple Log footage and is adaptable for any footage from any camera that I'm working with. This is an update on how I color grade my work, showcasing my workflow using shots filmed on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You can also visit my previous videos on color grading as this is similar, but I wanted to make a new video for this year on my workflow. And if you want a review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max for filmmakers, it's already up on my channel. Apple Log is that good, and when you can properly set up your scene with good lighting, it can be hard to tell what footage is from an iPhone versus an actual camera. Before showing you my updated workflow, I want to quickly help you capture the best footage you can get from your iPhone. And the best way to capture that footage is by using the Blackmagic camera app for more control over your filming. This makes it so much easier to properly expose and compose my shots compared to the stock camera app iPhones have. If I'm trying to get a quick shot, I could still use the regular camera app even in log, but when I have the time to really dial in my settings and want the best results from what I capture, the Blackmagic camera app is a must and the best part, it's free. I love being able to have a LUT set up in the app so I know what my footage will look like when I go to edit it later. With the ISO, I don't think there's necessarily a base ISO you should always film at, but I always try to stick around 800 or lower if possible. With the aperture being locked off, I try to have my shutter speed double my frame rate, but if I don't have a proper ND filter set up with my iPhone, I'll crank the shutter speed if needed. This app makes it so much easier to check out many different aspect ratios I might want to use, and there are a lot of other features that make it more enjoyable to film. With such a small sensor in the iPhone, you are trying to minimize the noise you can get in your footage, but if you can't avoid bad lighting conditions, a little noise never hurts. Okay, now let's get into grading these three clips I have here. Just like my previous videos, I'll go through color grading the first shot, then do a run through of the nodes for the next two as the workflows are similar and you can see the slight variations I might do. Let's start with this shot right here. I feel like I always have a shot of me in my bathroom, so I thought why not test the iPhone in the same setting. As I always do, I start on the second node to add my phantom LUT. I always use this on my Sony footage, but now these LUTs have been created for many different camera profiles, including Apple Log for the iPhone 15. But I've actually been using the Sony version on my iPhone footage because I tested it and to me, I think they work with it. I'd still recommend getting the iPhone version since you know it probably will work better with the Apple Log, but why not try the LUTs you already have first? So these are all the phantom LUTs and I decided to go with Utopia for the shot. And now with our LUT selected, we start in the first node with our primary adjustments. So now in our offset, I'm going to drop the exposure of the entire image because I overexposed when I was filming so I can avoid noise in my shadows. Next, I go to my gamma and raise it up just a bit to bring back some of that detail. And same with my gain just to burn it up a little more. And then I go to my lift to drop it down and push me back into the shadows. Now I'm going to drop down the highlights to bring back some of that detail and the lighter parts. And now I go to my contrast just to punch the image in a little more. And then I go to my pivot to open the image back up. After messing with the contrast and pivot, I want to go to the shadows and make them a little darker. I think the image is too cool, so I'm going to go to the temp and warm it up to as much as I like it. And I'll also go to the tint and just make it a little more towards the magenta side. Now my primary adjustments are done, so I'm going to make a third node after my phantom LUT so I can make my film curve. Here I add default anchors to make the film curve easier, and I just mess around with it until I like the look. Next up, in the fourth node, I go to my curves and start with my hue versus saturation. I pick the area around my cheek because I want to get the red part and I want to drop the saturation just a bit there so it's not too overpowering. And now I want to drop the teals and blues just a bit in the saturation so it's not too much in the image. And I'll make them about the same value each. I want to drop the magentas as well so it's not too purple in the image. Next up, I want to go to my hue versus luminance. I want to go to my reds and raise them up just a bit so they're not too dark. Same with my teals and blues and I'll just push them towards the same value. Next up, I'll go back to my hue versus hue and I want to go to my magenta to shift it just a bit. I don't want the image to look too purple so I'm going to push it more towards the red. In the next node, I want to go to my luminance versus saturation and I want to click on my cheek and drop it down just a bit more. 
And I think to the left of that point, I want to drop it down just a bit so it's not too saturated. But to balance it out, I want to go to the brightest side and just increase it so it's a little more balanced for the saturation. Now we're going to skip the fifth note for now and just leave it there. Now in the next note, this is where I'm going to do my color grading. First, I want to start with my lift and remove the reds to add teal into the shadows. Now I'm going to go to my gamma and warm up the image a bit more just to balance it out. And I'll do the same in the gain to add a bit more warmth into the image. And now I go into the log wheels and I want to remove green from the shadows to make the blacks more black. And then in the midtones, I warm it up a bit more. And that's all I'll do in this node, so let's get into the next one. Now in the seventh node, I want to add a bit more contrast and I'm going to use editable spleens to move points on the curve and make it a bit more punchy. After messing around, this is the curve that I went with. And now in the eighth node, this is where I'm going to add Dehancer. Ever since I got Dehancer, I've been using this in all of my work just like the Phantom Lutz, and if you decide you want to buy Dehancer, you can use my code BATISTA for 10% off your purchase. So first, I don't need anything in the input, so I'm going to start in the film, and I'm going to change the profile to my favorite, which is Kodak Vision 3 500T. I'm always using this film profile, and I just adjust the push and pull to what I like. Next, I'll go down to the print, and this is where I add some of that contrast back in. And I want to make the colors more rich, so I'm going to increase the color density. And to make the image more even, I'm going to increase the exposure just a bit. As you can see, Dehancer makes a really big difference. Next, I'll go up into the expand and change the black and white points so I can make the image pop a little bit more. After that, now I'm going to mess with the film grain. I usually start by dropping the amount because I think it's a little too much the way that it is. I'm not going to mess around with the shadows, but I'm going to drop the midtones just a bit and the highlights. Sometimes I mess around with the other settings and you can definitely do that, it just depends on how your taste is. There's also halation and bloom that I use from time to time, but I'm not going to use it for this shot. And now in the final node, I'm going to add a glow. To start out, I'm going to drop the global blend down. And now I want to change the composite type from add to soft light. I want to increase the exposure of the gamma just a bit, and now I want to mess around with the shine threshold just to brighten up the image and make it pop a little more. And I'll also drop the spread just so that it's not too all over the place. Now I'm going to go back to the fifth node and make some final adjustments to the image. I want to use a window just to make the image on the bottom a little warmer and darker. So after setting up the window, I'm going to drop the gamma down just a bit, and I think I'm going to make the color boost a little stronger to add a little color back in the bottom. And I think the top image is a little more cooler, so I want to add a bit more warmth to the bottom to make a contrast throughout the image. And that's pretty much it for this shot. I think it turned out really well, but I also have another method that I want to show you with this clip in case you want to do less work. So here I'm going to start with the same four notes that I did with the breakdown, but I'm going to change the next note to add something different. Now instead of doing that color grading I did in that one node, I'm going to add in a gamut LUT to add the color grade. Now gamut LUTs are great when you don't want to add the color grade or if you want different options to choose from for what grade you want. Now these LUTs you can use with any footage because it's not a conversion LUT so you can use it with Apple Log or any camera you're using and get really nice color grades with your image. I'm going to go with this first LUT from the 606 pack. If you think the intensity of the LUT is too much, you can drop the key output of the gain right here. You can blend it in a little more, but I think they work perfectly fine at 100% intensity. After that, I use the same dehancer settings that I used previously, and I think it works just as well. And then I use Glow to make a couple of adjustments, and that's pretty much it. Now that you're all done, you can always go back and change the gamut LUT to get a different look for your image. And there you go. Now, before I get into the next two breakdowns, if you want to invest more in your color grading techniques or there are other creative skills you want to learn or improve at, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the biggest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros. With a wide range of topics from filmmaking, design, illustration, and even improving your lifestyle and productivity, Skillshare has the classes you need to start or improve your skills to take your career to the next level, so why not start today? I used Skillshare when I first started my career to improve my abilities faster, but at the time I really didn't know where to start. But now with Learning Paths, they made it easier than ever to go from beginner to pro in no time. Learning Paths are classes that are handpicked to be taken in the order given, so they build on one another to strengthen what you learn so you get better faster. They are not only available for beginners, but also for those of you who are already more advanced. Here is a great learning path for Marcel for those of you starting in video editing and color grading. 
and you can also search for other classes that dive deeper and focus on color grading or other aspects you want to boost. Right now, I've been going through Ali's learning path to improve my productivity so I can get more work done and stress about it less. If you want to join me and this amazing community, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. You have to go check it out and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So now with this next clip, I'm going to run down the nodes that I used to color correct and grade this shot. I think this shot is absolutely incredible and I think it's going to show the power of Apolog. So to start out, I'm going to use a phantom LUT in this node and here I'm going to use tungsten. As you can see with the tungsten LUT, it was very overexposed, but in the primary adjustments, I'm able to fix that and get the colors right back. You first start by dropping the offset to get a balanced image, and then you can mess around with the gamma gain and the lift. And I want to show you here with the highlights, when it was at zero, it's very bright, but dropping it all the way back down to 100, that brought back a lot of details. I also dropped the shadows a bit, and I wanted to boost the colors a bit more. I then added contrast and opened up the image with a pivot, and here I wanted to use the mid detail and drop it a bit so it's not too sharp. In the next node after the phantom LUT, this is where I added my film curve. And as you can see, it doesn't do a little too much, but you see it a bit in the shadows. In the node after, this is where I did my color grading, and I started with the lift dropping the reds, added a bit more warmth into the gamma, and a little bit more warmth too into the gain. I went into my log wheels in the same node and dropped the greens into the shadows to make the blacks black. And I also warmed up the midtones and highlights a bit. In the node after, I used editable spleens to make it a bit more punchy with the curves. And here in the next node is where I went and used Dehancer. Of course, for my film profile, I used Kodak 500T. I skipped the next three options and went down to the print. Here are the settings as you can see to increase the exposure and the contrast and the color density. And here are the settings I used for my film grain. And then in the last node is where I added the glow. Here are the settings that I went with, of course dropping the global blend first and then messing around above to see what I can get. After all those shots were done, I added a node at the very beginning and really dropped the highlights a bit more just so I can get a little more color in the sky. I also did this so I can match my iPhone footage better with my Sony camera and I think I did a pretty good job with that. And that's how I color graded this beautiful sunset. Now here's the last shot I want to break down and I think I got a beautiful shot of the cherry blossoms here in New York City. In the second node I start out with the phantom LUT and I used Utopia again just like the first shot. I went back into the previous node and did my primary adjustments, dropping down the overall exposure and just messing around with the gamma, gain and lift to how I liked it. I also dropped the highlights, increased the shadows and the color boost I wanted to lower it just a bit. I warmed up the image, added a little bit more magenta, and of course I added contrast. And you gotta open up that pivot if you're gonna use the contrast. In the third node, of course, this is where I did my film curve. It didn't make much of a difference here, but I just used it from another shot I had. In the fourth node, this is where I did my color grading, and it's the same process with the lift dropping the reds, warming it up in the gamma, and just a little bit in the gain too. I go to my log wheels and I decrease the greens to make the blacks black, warm it up in the midtones, and that's it for the color grading. In the fifth node, I did the editable spleens with the curves and I made it punch just a little bit more to really get that nice white from the cherry blossoms. After that, I added Dehancer and these are the settings that I went with. Always using Kodak 500T, using the black and white points to open up the image and changing up the print so I can add contrast, exposure, and the color density as well. And here's the film green that I used, dropping the amount and switching up the shadows, midtones, and highlights. In the final node, I used Glow, and these are the settings that I went with, changing the global blend, soft light, adding up gamma, and, you know, shine threshold, and the spread. And that's pretty much it for this shot, but I have one more bonus look after this. Now really quickly, I was messing around with the gamut LUTs, so I took away the color grading, and I thought Belmont looked really nice with this shot. I wanted to drop the key output just a little bit so it blends a bit better, and I think the gamut lug made this shot look even better, so I think it's worth looking into. And that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this updated color grading guide on using Apple Log footage for color grading like the movies, make sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.